What's going on to all my intellectual savages out there? I'm Marcus and you are at the channel of the Debt Free Dad. In today's video, we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and the four key stages of entrepreneurship. I don't know. I never heard anyone else talk about this as, as it relates to it being in particular stages. So I'm claiming it as my own. As always, if you're interested in following my debt-free journey and learning about finance, I definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button and that bell because it'll help the channel grow and help this video reach more people. So I do know a little bit about having your own business because I've had three of them. The first one, I served as a freight broker. Essentially, that's the third party who facilitates the shipments of goods and products between the driver and the company who has to deliver the goods. And the other job that I had was, hey, I was a solo practitioner. I had my own law firm. Maybe one day I'll tell you all some crazy stories about that. Well, I do got a few. Let me tell you one. Um, it's crazy too when you have your own business. I guess I'll say this before we jump into the video. Remember, the value of your services when you first start a business is what you put on it. So very rarely should you offer too many discounts because if you offer a discount for your services a lot of times people because it's a new business they'll evaluate and grade your product in accordance with that price it's really weird how it works and then when you have your own business especially if it's a law firm uh, people will find creative ways to pay you like i literally represented this guy for uttering a forged instrument and counterfeit bills and then when I made my first appearance on his behalf after he signed the retainer agreement, he had to pay me some additional monies. And this fool had the audacity to come to my office and write me a check like I wasn't representing him for writing bad checks and passing out counterfeit bills. I mean, people try to pay me in watches and microwaves. It, this shit got kind of crazy after a while. And the third business that I would actually classify as a business that I had is being a real estate investor, being a landlord owning property. You do want to have multiple streams of income, but we always have to remember there is absolutely nothing wrong with being a nine to five employee. So hey, we don't want to job shame people for being a nine to five employee because everyone doesn't want to be an entrepreneur and have to deal with the, the startup costs, dealing with employees. I mean, that's just not for everybody. So everybody has their own road and their path that they want to take to financial freedom. Now let's talk about the four stages of entrepreneurship. Let's go to the discussion table. I don't even know if it's a discussion table, but that's what I'm gonna call it. Let's dive right in. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. The first stage of entrepreneurship is the planning and preparation stage. That step is self-explanatory. It's where you think about the action plan and all the essential steps you have to take to bring your business plan into actual fruition. You're talking about a name, a service, a customer base, a location. You want to look at all of your trademarks. You want to look at all of those essential things that you're going to need to really start your business and get it off the ground. So that's really the easy one. The next one is the follow through stage. And I like to call the follow through stage is where you plan things out, you have an actual business plan, but now you have to follow through with all of those steps that you made to accomplish your goal of opening the business. That could be anything from acquiring the domain name, that could also be uh, putting in your trademark or patent application for a particular name or logo, that could be uh, identifying, locating, and putting in a bid to actually obtain a particular property if you need an actual storefront or working to establish an online presence through social media but essentially that's where you actually follow through with all of the steps that you planned out as to what needs to be done to get your business off the ground. One of the main things that you're going to have to do in this area is really focus on startup capital. Some businesses don't require a lot of startup capital. Other businesses, you may have been fortunate enough to be able to save up the money to have the startup capital, or you may have to actually go to a financial institution and get a loan for the initial startup capital. In this phase, you're really just focusing on the execution. The third phase I like to refer as the self-employed phase. This is where you actually have your business, you have everything in place, and you're actually 
performing the work needed to bring in an income. So, in an example where I open my own law practice, it's one thing to come up with a name and file a paperwork to start a PLLC and so forth. However, stage three, when you talk about self-employed, that's when I actually had to do the work of getting clients, going to court, uh, working the business. And most times when you're in this self-employment stage, there are two subsections underneath this self-employment stage. And I can talk about it from uh, you know, having a law firm. When you have a law firm, there's pretty much two tasks that you're responsible for. One is the actual business side of things, the accounts, the books, the money, the advertising, the employees, paying employees, if paying taxes, all of those administrative things that are essential to have your business operating. The second phase is the actual work, uh, actually being an attorney, going to the courtroom, uh, being skilled at your job, litigating cases, negotiating settlement agreements. That's the second part. Now, I tell you, when I had my own law firm, it was a very short period of time, but it was immediately after, you know, getting out of law school. And I realized early on that I loved the actual courtroom work. I loved the actual work of the litigating, going, having jury trials, the negotiations. I absolutely loved it. What I didn't like as much was the business size, the accounting, calling people down to get their retainer, uh, hunting people down to pay you money that may be owed because they only paid you a certain portion of the retainer or front. I mean, that those type of business functions were what really turned me off initially. And a lot of that is because I'll tell you, when I started my law practice, I was actually learning how to be an attorney. So think about it, you're learning how to be an attorney by actually doing your job as an attorney, but you're also simultaneously learning how to own, operate, and effectively manage a business. There are a lot of people who can and have done that effectively, but for me, it was just frustrating. The business aspect was something that I really wasn't ready to deal with and wasn't able to kind of wrap my mind around at the time. So that's stage number three, self-employed. In this stage, you're putting a lot of your efforts into actually getting business. Your efforts actually create money. So, you know, a lot of people are like, oh man, you're self-employed, you have your own business. It's great to have, you don't have a boss. Well, you actually do have a boss. Your clients, your customers are your boss, and you have to put out the effort to actually get an income coming in. If you don't do something, income doesn't come in. That's the self-employment uh, stage. And the final stage is entrepreneurship. And this is interesting because you know, me and my father actually, as I was going over this topic, me and him had a discussion on what's the difference between entrepreneurship and self-employment. And um, I think this is accurate, you all tell me, but the entrepreneurship stage is the culmination of all the work that you've put in. And I think the key difference that you have to understand between the self-employment stage and the entrepreneurship stage is how much time and effort you have to put in. To me, and this is my definition, of all the businesses I had, and I had three of them, there was only one where I have actually reached the entrepreneur stage, and that's as a real estate investor. Um, and the, the key, and, and the reason that is, is because at the entrepreneur stage, how I define it is, if you don't do any physical work in your business for a period of 90 days, will you still maintain the same level of income? So when you're in that self-employment stage, you can be really making a great income, but the difference and the distinction between that self-employment and entrepreneurship stage is, at that self-employment stage, if you're a truck driver, you have actually have to get into that truck and drive that truck in order for you to make an income. As to where you're at the entrepreneur stage, you don't have to physically do any work because you have, in a truck driver example, you have truckers who work for you and who actually drive for you. So if you take 90 days off, the income from their efforts will still come in and you will still make money. So that's how I define being an entrepreneur. It's, do you have the ability to do no work related to your business, uh, put out no physical effort 
for 90 days and still sustain the same amount of income. Once you're in that position, you're an entrepreneur. And you know, self-employment, starting your own business, it's something that may not be for everyone. At the end of the day, you your own executive, you your own CEO, you can make the choice that's best for you and your finance. But I just wanted to give that real quick story, a uh, real quick breakdown of those four stages of entrepreneurship. Because everyone doesn't want to have their own business. Some people love the work they do. Some people are satisfied with the compensation. And a lot of people retire millionaires and a lot of people have and attain financial freedom and peace of mind by working the nine to five. So it's definitely not anything to be ashamed of. And a lot of people actually use their nine to five to fuel their vision of becoming self-employed and then matriculating and becoming an entrepreneur. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Right now, there's probably a few videos popping up on the screen. Definitely take a look at those videos and hit that subscribe link in the middle. Y'all take care. Be blessed. Peace.